or rack thousands of them together, like Mac Stadium, a company that has nearly 8,000 Mac Minis. <coughs> There, folks, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and this is the beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, as you can tell from the cliche sign. And no, I didn't want to wait in line to stand in front. This is episode one of my new series, which I've been working on for quite a while. I made this. We visit people and companies that do things that are very much against the norm. Let's go visit Max Stadium. companies and server rooms, you think of big towers of big black boxes with tables running back and forth and lots of heat. Well, there's lots of heat in here. But what you don't think of is walls and walls of silver Mac minis? Yeah, we're here at Mac Stadium. I'm with Brian. He's the vice president. And what is it that you guys do? So basically, uh, we, we do Mac infrastructure as a service. So if somebody needs Macs in a data center instead of trying to figure it out themselves, they tell us what they need and how many. That's awesome. So how long has Mac Stadium been around? Mac Stadium uh, started in 2013, actually in Atlanta. And uh, now we're in Vegas and we're all over the world now, but uh, it's grown a lot in the last five years. There aren't many companies that do what you do. No, there's none that do it to this scale and this type. I mean, we, we try to become the experts on Mac hosting and make sure we're the place to come. But, uh, you know, Macs have been in the data center for a long time, but not to this scale. Right. And and. Now that developers need it more and more, the, the demand is bigger than ever. So it turned out good in that sense. That's awesome. So you're running Mac Minis. You've got Mac Pros. Yep. You've got a few iMac Pros. iMac Pros. And then some Xers. There you and some Xers. <laughs> they there are remnants. They're still alive. So these these racks, people don't make these racks, right? No, absolutely not. These are totally custom made, patented racks. Uh, we just try to get as many Macs per square foot as possible. And since Macs have such low power and low heat, we can really get them in there tight and not damage them at all. And so we, we built these to make sure that yeah, they don't they don't sell these anyway. That's awesome. <laughs> so I have seen in the floor that there are vents with air conditioning and cooling to keep things running cool. But these Mac Minis are just out in the open. Yeah. And it's not an issue, eh? Yeah, if you have a Mac Mini on your computer desk at home, you know it doesn't really heat up, doesn't get real loud. So natural circulation works good here. Uh, the Mac Pros and the Xers, obviously, we try to direct the heat still, but the Mac Mini is wide open and fun. So let's talk about Mac Pro, because Mac okay. Pro, the current models were released in 2013. They're starting to show their age. Yeah. And you just told me you're putting in 600 soon? Oh, hopefully, yeah. We've done probably 400 in the last couple months, and there should be another 8, eight to 1,000 in the next few months. Uh, yeah, uh, people people wonder where, who is buying all the Mac Pros. It's you guys. We're buying all the Mac Pros. <laughs> Very cool. So let's take a look around, shall we? Okay, you bet. All right, so we are in an air-conditioned tunnel right? of cold Mac hot. Pros. Yep. yep. And uh, why are these rooms colder than the, the Mac Minis? So with the Mac Pros, uh, as you know, the heat comes in one side, the air goes out the other. So we have them all pointed a certain direction. So the air conditioning comes out of the floor through the Mac Pro right and then shoots out on the other side. It's the cold aisle of Mac Pros. Yeah. There you go. And uh, Mac Pros are workstation hardware, right? So do you find that they run a little more reliably, so to speak, than the Mac Minis? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's like a, it's like a deal of 0.01% uh, repairs and 0.001%. I mean, they all run so reliably. Excellent. But the Mac Pros, yeah, I mean, they are beefier parts, and um, they're, they're a little more expensive to repair when they sure. do break. But either way, we're not repairing too much or anything. That's awesome. Yeah. And what's surprising to me is that the majority of these don't actually have internal storage. Right. We put a SAN and then all the Mac Pros are empty and they're all booting the VMs from there. And that way, you know, customers, when they spin up a VM, they're all coming from the same place. The data store is there for all the Mac Pros. And then when they need more, they need say we need 100 more Mac Pros. We don't need the storage. We just stick them in, connect them to their data store, and then they're off and running. Yeah. And these only have gigabit networking, right? So do you have Thunderbolt 2 that carries the 
data connection and the storage, or how is that all yeah. set up? So what we did was we tried to make them ready for the data center since they're not built for that. And so you have the you have the gigabit, but you also use Thunderbolt to uh, the fiber channel to get to the SAN, and we can we try to give it as many connections as possible. Right. And even then, you know, there's only one input of power. So what we do is we use uh, AB power elsewhere that runs two of the Mac Pro, so that it still has redundant power too. It it, it took some real. I, I tell people we we actually put the brown peg in the square hole that everybody dreads, and in part of that was getting it ready for power and connections and everything. Yeah, because these are not made for the server environment. Definitely are not made. Yeah, yeah. That's a, awesome. A lot of people get really confused when they walk by here trying to figure out what they are. <laughs> yeah. So that X70 is running 44 terabytes of not just SATA SSD storage, but NVMe storage. Yeah. Right. That's not cheap. That is not cheap. That is definitely not cheap. <laughs> and so the controllers that you have to connect the Mac Pros to those devices for storage, for networking, are those something off the shelf? No, that's completely, that's in-house. What we did was, I mean, we, we patented the whole rack because it's oh, really? so unique. And we owned a patent on it, but it's uh, not only how to slide it in and store, but right. also, you know, to connect those. And we build them ourselves in-house and we put them on the back of them. And, um, and that's what makes it different. That's, that's what makes awesome. It different. And so we've got Mac Pros here. What you can't see in the back, but you'll see now, is you've got iMac Pros too. Now you don't have a lot of them, but you've got a few. Yeah, because uh, so so the so the the Mac Pros are VMware approved. Sure. So you can run ESXi on them, and you can use it that way. The iMac Pros and the Mac Minis are sure. Not. And so we use what's called Inca, and that's not VMware based, but it's for VMs also. Right. Um, if, and that's how we make the first Mac Mini cloud. But it's also what we use on the iMac Pros. Because so far they haven't been uh, approved by VMware to run sure. VMware, and uh, so when you need super high counts of cores and RAM and everything, uh, we'll use an iMac Pro for. And like you said, only a couple customers right now, and and of course we get all kinds of heat because those iMac Pros have such beautiful screens, and we smack, smack them together, together. <laughs> so that we can't see what people are doing and they can't see it. And maybe someday those will be useful, but right now we're just using the insides. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Brian, so much for your time. It's pretty incredible what they're doing here. Where can customers find more oh, about yeah. you? So absolutely, MacStadium.com is the obvious one. Uh, uh, we're, we got data centers in Atlanta, Las Vegas, Silicon Valley, Frankfurt, Germany, Dublin, Ireland, and more to come. So we try to get to it as close as, close as possible to the developers. I need you, but you're off my face.